Hi, my name's Bob Greenier, and I'm a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I want to do something with you that's just plain fun, and it should help you to understand the Vladimir Vysotsky and Alakorlinova experiment we hope to do as a project later in the year. It's something that you can do in your household with things that you mostly have in the house and something that's very inexpensive that you can purchase online, and you create something at the end that supposedly has plenty of health benefits. Let's get right to it. The first thing you're going to need is what's called a SCOBY, and this is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. This will be available online, you can easily find it from many suppliers, and they cost around about $7. I got mine from Sweden, I think, and it came in a little polyethylene Ziploc bag inside a bubble wrap postal envelope. Then what you're going to need is you're going to need some means of boiling water. And obviously water. I used tap water and I used a kettle and I boiled my water. I then took some tea and you can choose your favourite tea, whatever that is, whether it's nettle tea or, you know, fruit tea. I used plain English black tea and I brewed it and then I strained out the loose tea leaves and then I mixed some sugar in it stirred it until the sugar was dissolved, and then I let it cool. Once you have your cool, sweet tea, you take the SCOBY, and here in this close-up you can see it's a, it's like a gelatinous, sort of snotty thing. They actually can make clothing out of it when it's dried. It's like a, almost like a replacement for leather. It has some cellulose-type structures to it. But essentially, the SCOBY in this experiment is the kind of equivalent to Dr. Korlinova and Dr. Vysotsky's syntrophic colonies. Only uh, they use a combination of what they say aerobic syntrophic microorganisms and microorganisms of methogenic sea ooze. And this is because they need organisms that are comfortable in a salty solution. Uh, and here you can see this picture from John Allen Elson of the yeast and the bacteria that you would get in your SCOBY. So here we can see that the SCOBY is floating and what will happen as the SCOBY digests and transforms the sugared tea, it produces a whole load of molecules and it grows also and you can actually end up with a lot more SCOBY at the end of your uh, brewing than you started with and in fact you can cut this up and give this to a friend or sell it online if you like. Anyway so essentially what you do is you add a cloth over the top and after about four or five days at 20 to 35 degrees C you will have kombucha. There's all kinds of um, recipes online. You can add flavors and do a second stage fermentation for instance by putting like fresh fruit in and putting it in a, a sealed bottle and then it gets naturally carbonated. There's many many different recipes and uh, you might want to do the second stage because uh, the actual first stage tends to taste a little bit by like vinegar and that's not surprising because uh, the vi vinegar that you use you put on your your fish and chips or you, you might put into pickle vegetables that vinegar is made in a similar way in 2014 the u.s sales of bottled kombucha was approximately 400 million dollars according to wikipedia and 350 million dollars of that was earned by millennium products now i've got no relationship with the millennium products but this gives me the opportunity to show you that they have real products that people and many of you may actually already know of these products but these uh, products are big business now uh, all over the world and you may be paying like in New York maybe as much as six dollars for for one bottle drink of kombucha so not only can you make something that supposedly is good for you it's also reasonably valuable as well so when you compare what you see with kombucha to the bioreactors that uh, Korlinova and Vysotsky are using in their experiments they're not too dissimilar. You've got the same kind of material in there. You've got water. You've got glucose. You've got some other organics, potentially. Uh, we'll get into that when we know more. And you have your yeast and your multiple species of bacteria. Uh, at the end of their experiments, rather than seeing things float at the top, a lot of that sinks to the bottom. And this is not actually surprising, I don't think, because the starting material comes from sea sediment. So it makes sense that it, it sinks. Anyway, you can see here from the presentation at ICCF20 that the end product is kind of like it's a bit of gunk at the bottom of the reaction vessels. So essentially that's it. 
So just summing up, the fermentation of sweet tea and other organics in water and air with a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast produces a reportedly biocompatible solution claimed to have advantageous nutrients called kombucha, a drink that has been prepared in the East for thousands of years for its health-giving properties. The Vysotsky Korlinova et al. experiment uses a similar process and claims to effectively deactivate 137 cesium. That's the radioactive isotope of cesium that you get from nuclear reactors and that is present in the fallout in Fukushima and previously in the fallout in Chernobyl. And they use symbiotic yeast and bacteria cultures that they call a microbiological syntrophic association. And that works together to produce stable 138 barium. So if the bacteria in the Vysotsky and Korlinova experiments are changing elements in order to you know, either get energy or get the material that they wish in order to structure their cells when they're dividing, and as far as we understand it, they are uh, grown in a calcium void solution, and so in order to get a biological analogue of calcium, they are creating the barium, the 138 barium, from the 137 cesium. It might be the case that actually in your uh, production of kombucha, I mean, you might ask the question, is the SCOBY transforming the water and the organics in there into something that is more biocompatible, not just on a molecular scale, but also on an element scale? I mean... It could be that the reasons that no one knew about that these things were being done over thousands of years was that if you took water from different areas, it may not have been so perfectly biocompatible in terms of its elemental and molecular contents, making it harder to stomach and digest. So it could be that by spreading the SCOBY between different geographic regions, the colonies of bacteria and yeast, they look at what's in the solution that they've been given and they make something that really suits them and works. And when you ingest that, it's it's already been given the thumbs up by a whole bunch of yeast and a whole bunch of bacteria as being not a bad place to be. Um, so, you know, it really opens your mind potentially to uh, the reasons why kombucha came about as a thing and why it potentially could be really healthy to consume. Now that I'm not proposing that is healthy to consume and if you're going to take anything into your body you need to be aware of the risks so i just like to say that just to close out now we really look forward to working with Korlinova and Vysotsky and their teams uh, on this replication but in the meantime why not try your hand at making a drink that is claimed to be healthy and there's tons of videos out there and resources on the web so why not give it a go